name is Dr. Guillaume Dunbar. In this program we're going to look at dog trainers around the world. Welcome to World's Dog Trainer. Hi, my name's Georgia from Poor Prince in Perth, Western Australia. I got into dog training when I took my first dog, Stella, to a local dog club in my late teens. Ever since then, I've wanted to be a dog trainer. I started my professional career running group classes. Since then, I moved on to manager of dog behaviour and enrichment at one of Australia's oldest shelters. For years, I worked there with shelter dogs, and now my focus is on preventing dogs getting into shelters in the first place. Hi, my name is Cecile. I first became interested in dog training when I took my adopted boxer to a behaviorist in Germany. I was so impressed with her methods and with the improvement I saw in my dog that I knew I had to learn more about behavior and training. After I moved to Australia, I started working with shelter dogs and I earned my industry accreditation as a dog trainer. For the last several years, I've been working with dogs and their owners and I'm earning a master's degree in companion animal behavior. Hi, my name is Trevor. I've worked with sheltered dogs in many different roles, from kennel hand to senior behavioural trainer. My work rehabilitating dogs led to a keen interest in preventing dogs ending up in the shelter in the first place. I went to earn my industry accreditation as a dog trainer and now I run my own training business as well as working with the Paw Prince training team. I also volunteer as a trainer for assistance dogs and in the casual keeper pool at the Perth Zoo. Learning new skills is often more difficult for adults than it is for children, hence we focused our video on kids and dogs. Educating kids about dog training and behaviour means the next generation of adults will be better equipped to enrich the lives of our beloved companion dogs. The training that we provide helps the most vulnerable in the house train a dog. Children are the most likely to be targeted by dogs as they are physically smaller and often act erratically. By working with children on how to train and act around dogs, we can enable them to have better control over the animals that will remain with them for the rest of their lives. Like most good trainers, we recognize that reinforcement strategies and good problem-solving skills are the keys to successful training. Traditional methods that involve scolding, choke chains, and physical positioning can harm the animal and they send the wrong message to children that physical discipline is the way to solve problems. Instead, we at Paw Prints strive to encourage positive, healthy relationships that do not involve pain, fear, or injury. It is essential that puppies and their children attend a puppy class, regardless of the parent's skill in training. Good puppy classes provide appropriate socialization for the puppies and instill good training habits in the children. One of the reasons parents get a dog is so that the whole family can play and cuddle with the dog. Now, children use their hands to play and cuddle, as well as to manipulate and explore. Dogs, however, use their teeth and jaws to play, manipulate, and explore. Dogs will also chase, pounce, and box in play, and they will transfer these behaviors to people. Both children and dogs should be taught from an early age the basic rules of safe play. If parents teach, supervise, and reinforce appropriate play behavior, they will be rewarded with safe, joyful play between their children and their dogs. Training under supervision is an excellent way to develop a respectful relationship between dog and child. Another excellent way is for the children to be involved in preparing the dog's enrichment activities, such as Kongs, frozen sardine pops, burying treats in a sandpit, hiding treats in the backyard, or, OK, an IQ toy. It is important that children are involved with the dog receiving exercise and mental stimulation. The early developmental stages for both puppies and children are important, and the associations learned early on will last throughout adulthood. We like to set the stage for what we refer to as education for life for both the puppies and the children. Teach a dog to go around an object such as a pole or a cone or a copper log at the doggy park. We start off with food luring. So we have a tasty treat in our hand, we pop it on the dog's nose, bring them to the pole, get them to go around and then reward them. Good boy! Okay, and this is Lauren and Bender the dog and we're doing some agility training. Ready to go! 
Ready with your right hand point and run, go. That's it. And give him a treaty, good boy. Well done. Every time you take your dog out to the dog park or for a walk, you could practice this exercise on different pieces of equipment. It would probably take you a good couple of weeks to teach this behavior, and you'll get to the point where we actually can get the dog to go around something when we point at it, good boy, and we can have a bit of a game with him when he's done that. Then we can get to the point where then we can ask him to go the other way, go. Oh. Good boy, and he can have a play with that now. Good boy, well done, good job. So now we're going to be working on the tunnel. Now this is a proper agility tunnel, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can shop around at secondhand baby stores for little baby tunnels and children's tunnels um, for a small breed of dog or puppies. So what we're gonna do is have Lauren take Bender to the front of the tunnel and then ask him to go tunnel. We're with Georgia and Chanel today. When we're initially training a dog to go over a jump, it's very important that the jump is very low to the ground. A nice sit at side is a good self-control exercise to start this off. And if we have a nice tasty food reward, let the dog know that you've got it, throw it over the jump, and they'll go over. Good dog, thank you. We're gonna be working on just one jump um, in this session. That's really nice, good girl. Well done. Throw a bit of food over the jump so she goes over. That's it, good girl. The next step we would do is start to get further away from the dog weight so that we can give a bit of what's called a lead out. Okay, good boy. The reason that we do that is because dogs usually can run much faster than us. Over several weeks, I would be expecting to maybe raise the bar of the jump a little bit and also maybe to move the dog back from the jump a little bit further, ask them for a sit and a wait, move away, and then release them. Okay, good boy, well done. Okay, this time we've added another jump. We're gonna have Chanel and Georgia running together over the two jumps. So when you're ready, Georgia, off you go. Well done, good dog, well done. So over time you'll be able to direct your dog to a jump with your hand. And jumping is a really good skill for a dog to have as well as it's lots of fun for both of you to do. Georgia and Chanel are going to be doing a little mini agility course together. It's really important that dogs and children are encouraged to work as a team over tasks such as jumps and tunnels and little planks. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Good girl. Well done. Tell her she's doing well. That's lovely. Bring her back round. A little bit slower. And two jumps. Okay, so we've been teaching Bender when we say the word cute to put his chin on the floor. So let's see that one more time, Lauren. And give him a tickle and tell him he's finished. Good boy. 